Guess what kind of interview we have for you guys tonight? A wonderful one. Ed Asner's in the studio, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hey. yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Living legend, Ed Asner. And Christina Tobin uh, is also with us. And we're going to talk about uh, free and equal elections. We're going to talk about how we can change the system. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we're going to do it together, Ed. We're going to do it together. <laughs> so now, if, if you, you might know Ed Asner as, a, as an actor, obviously, Lou Grant in the Mary Tyler Moore show. and. And and the younger guys might know him from Up, uh, the Pixar movie where he was the voice of the the main character, uh, and and it goes on and on. Actually, I read that you have won more Emmys uh, for for acting as a male actor than anyone ever. No, 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 no. no Betty, I think Betty White's won more. Uh, I'm not sure. But, but as a, not, as a, maybe uh, maybe Cloris Leachman has. I don't know. Right, they I'm, say as a male actor. I, as, a, as a male who won both the same character, both for comedy and for drama. No, not bad, not, not, bad. Bad, not bad. But also a legendary activist, which has gotten you in trouble from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk about that too. Yahoo. <laughs> so, Christina, first let's talk about uh, Free and Equal Elections Foundation. Um, for, l let everybody know what that is, and then we'll talk about the context of all of this. I want to thank you and your team for having me here today. So much authenticity radiates uh, from the Young Turks, so I feel humbled, honored to be here. And the Free and Equal Elections Foundation, we've been around almost 10 years now, is a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to broaden electoral choices through education and direct positive action. Okay, excellent. So, uh, in the context of this election, what are you guys up to? We're hosting now our third round of the, of the United We Stand Fest at University of Colorado Boulder, co-hosted by Student Voices Count and many other student groups rising. It'll be this October 25th at the Mackey Auditorium. It's so beautiful, holds 2,000 people. And uh, the United We Stand Fest will precede the People's Presidential Debate. Okay, excellent. I want to talk to you more about the debates in a second. Ed, uh, what gets you animated enough to be involved uh, in this project? I believe in what she's doing. I think she uh, she practices it well. And uh, coming from the town meeting that uh, she held in Cambria last night, a town of six thousand people, it's an idyllic place, and uh, it was it was marvelous the caliber of the candidates and the uh, the attitude of the people who came to hear. All right, and uh, so. You you you've been a liberal for a long, long time, uh, and so talk to me about the uh, differences for the system we have now, as opposed to um, all the different uh, the times that you were an activist. What I'm really curious about is: is it better now, or is it worse now? In your opinion, I think it's as bad, if not worse. I think we live in a time of chaos wherein uh, people are insecure. The rush to Donald Trump is, uh, is significant of that. And, and uh, I think with the Tea Party Congress and their asinine behavior, uh, everybody's angry. And the people who follow Trump have uh, found a way to respond to that anger, even though his people have caused it. So, you know, one of my main causes that everybody who watches the Young Turks knows about is getting money out of politics, mm -hmm. and so I think that should that be public financing. Public financing, that's what you absolutely, think. yeah. And so, you know, the conservatives will charge back. No, that'll you'll spend, you know, some money on that, and we don't want to spend money on public financing of. They don't want to spend money anyway. They they, they wouldn't send their school kid to school if if uh, if uh, they had to pay for it. Yeah, and and to me, I feel like uh, we now spend trillions of dollars supporting the oil industry, the, the defense military. contractors, etc., because they're able to donate money to the politicians, mm -hmm. etc. Is that the beast you've been fighting all along? These moneyed interests that have found a way to take control of our government. The, isn't it tragic what's happened in Oklahoma with the fracking? Mm -hmm. It's terrible. The earthquakes those people have suffered through. I think it's terrible that Oklahoma should suffer from oil fracking. Anyway, uh, uh, I will go on and say, yeah, the, the, these people, they, they have fought global warming. 
if we acted right now, we probably are too late. But now is the time to act for everybody to understand about global warming and the fact that we have to yank it in, particularly the United States and certainly China. All uh, right. If we, if we don't do it, I, 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 as I said last night, I don't care for people. I don't care about people. <laughs> uh, okay. I want to save the earth. Uh huh. That's it. Yeah, that seems fair enough. Uh, yeah. Although there's some chance the earth is just going to shake us off. And and so who's going to take us off? The Earth. Like, oh. oh, you guys have been a little bit. I wish you would. I wish you would. I wish to show who's master. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm a slightly more pro-human than you are. I I, I'd like to stay around for a little bit longer. Well, yeah, <laughs> you're selfish. I know. Well, maybe so. So, Christina, let's talk about the context of this election. Uh, I am told by the mainstream media that we have these lovely and fair debates on television, and that we're all good. Uh, are you tell are you here to tell me that that is not true? Uh, it is not. I, you know, as far as what Ed said before, getting involved in local elections are definitely key. And every problem we have, I feel, derives from the flaws, the two-party system. So another flaw that helps to ben benefit and create this facade that there's only two parties is the Commission on Presidential Debates. It is such a corrupt platform. And it is run, again, by the former chair of the Democratic and Republican Party. The League of Women Voters retracted its support from the Commission on Presidential Debates in 1988, stating it's perpetuated a fraud on the American voters, a fraud, and it is a fraudulent platform. And I do think that it will become a thing of the past. How did they say with a straight face that the Democratic and Republican parties don't run it when the two guys deciding everything are former chairmen of the Republican and Democratic Party? Well, there's a reason some of their sponsors dropped in 2012. I expect that many more sponsors will drop because consciously I would never support such a corrupt platform. And if I were a candidate like Jill Stein or Gary Johnson, I would not want to be on that platform. No matter how much exposure, it cannot be trusted. It's corrupt. And I hope that they can be a part of a people's presidential debate, the people's presidential debate instead. You, you held one in 2012. Tell us about that. Remind us. That was beautiful. I got to moderate uh, that debate with Larry King. Uh, mainstream P media tagged it as a third party presidential debate. Truly, it was a people's, the people's presidential debate. And that was uh, aired on many media outlets live and uh, top 10 trending on Twitter. It really changed the national dialogue. And what we did is we spoke about issues that were of interest to the people, from the NDAA uh, to war to money and politics and so on, uh, to the rigged electoral system. And so those are the sort of issues people are talking about, many, many more. And those are the sort of issues we're not really addressing at the Commission on Presidential Debates that they're addressing. It's no good. We realized last week when we did some research into this that not a single reporter has asked Donald Trump if he wants to get money out of politics. He, he's been running this whole time on the system is corrupt, it's rigged, it's rigged. And no one's bothered to ask him, okay, would you like to unrig it? <laughs> would you like to get money out of politics? And the answer is, I bet, I hope someone will ask him is, no, he doesn't want to get money out of politics. And he, even if he did, and he's, I'm, I would be thrilled to get an answer from him, uh, he certainly uh, doesn't have a plan to fix it, right? He, I, I've never, he's certainly not. Of course, you could ask plan. Hillary the same question. Yeah, no, and we have. <laughs> By the way, here's Ed. What did she say? So we asked her uh, spokespeople, um, okay, they're communications folks. Uh, in an interview that we did at the yeah. DNC, he said, "Now we know that you're not going to be in favor of getting money out of politics in this election cycle. Right? Now, if you did, by the way, you would. I think they would easily win. If they said right now, okay, we're not taking any more corporate sponsors. From now on, we're doing the Bernie Sanders strategy. We're going to take twenty-seven dollars at a time from you guys, and we're going to get money out of politics. I think she'd win in a landslide. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But when I proposed that, they're like, no." We will not be doing that. I said, okay, I get it, I get it. You're in the middle of a race, you don't want to take any chances. Mm -hmm. Can you promise now that you will not run on corporate money the next time? Mm -hmm. If you if you're elected now for re-election, because then that gives you four years to get money out of politics. It gives you the right incentive to get money out of politics, and it would gain you tremendous credibility. Sure. And they said, nope. Not even worth considering. Who 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 did you ask? I asked the uh, the one of the top people in their communications uh, department. Okay. Well, then uh, the, the, I think that should prove to the world that ours is a corrupt system, 
that people, uh, uh, whatever gave corporations the right to vote and influence elections is a corrupt system, that until we get public financing, uh, we are a corrupt electorate. I completely and utterly agree. I think the answer is an amendment to get money out of politics. Yeah. And some say it should be public financing. I agree with that. There's many different alternatives for how to get money out of politics. I think we should discuss all of them in a convention that uh, we call to get that amendment. Right. And that's the one issue that brings conservatives and liberals together. Yet so-called conservative politicians and so-called liberal politicians never want to do it. So there's a reason why. Because they're part of the corrupt system. Sure. Yeah. It's a sick society. Yeah. So now I think the long term answer is that amendment. In the short term, in about 40 days or so, we're going to have an election. I am curious, Ed, which way you're leaning in that direction. Is, well, you know. Well, I, you have a button there that seems to indicate it. Maybe. Oh, that's <laughs> autism. <laughs> oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. yeah. It does look uh, like Hillary's slogan. <laughs> <with it. laughs> but, well, it is blue. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm naturally, uh, I've always been. Uh, other than the time I wrote, voted for John Anderson, I regretted that too. But that's the only time I've swayed from the Democratic uh, influence. But uh, I, I will go with Hillary, although I, Hillary does not please me at all. So a lot of people these days, unfortunately, say, well, look, um, well, it depends on your perspective, whether it's fortunate or unfortunate. They say, look, I'm not going to vote for corruption. So. You give me two choices of Donald Trump and, and Hillary uh, Clinton, and I don't accept your two choices. So I'm going to vote for a third party, and I'm going to vote for Jill Stein, who a uh, lot of our audience, who is who's a real liberal. What's your take on that? Well, I, I, I um, uh, who, who was it that uh, that stole votes? And uh, who was the last viable third party guy? Uh, uh, Ross Perot. No, Ralph Nader. You're talking. Ralph about. Nader. Yes. Ralph Nader. I, I couldn't vote for him, and, and uh, my secretary, who I constantly argued with, did. And of course, uh, his votes would have meant the difference in the election. Uh, but in this particular case, I would not choose either one of those people because it's, it's wasting the vote, and I would let loose the animal called Perot. Uh, called, called, Trump, yes, Trump. yeah, well, it's so sound alike. Yeah, they, they're both crazy in different ways. Yeah. Uh, and now Perot seems sane by comparison. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd vote for him. <laughs> yeah, over Trump in a second, and that doesn't mean we like Perot. It means yeah. we'd vote for him over Trump. Right. Uh, but now, Christina, I sense you have a different take on it. You're, it seems to me, you're far more open to third and fourth parties. A uh, very as far as uh, Trump and Sanders, I think they've really paved the way, as well as Ron Paul, Anderson, Nader, Perot, uh, to really an independent movement uprising. And Sanders and Trump, uh, they have created stirred more interest, right? I mean, if it had been Jeb Bush and Clinton, maybe the voters would still be more apathetic. That's a positive side of looking at as far as money in their campaigns, social media, game changer. They're not spending as much money. It's something to take into consideration. I think money is going and is becoming less influential uh, in the races. So um, as far as uh, the wasted vote, no, I don't believe uh, in that. I think that the wasted vote syndrome is a product of the two-party system because of the rigged electoral system, for example, they don't have alternative voting methods like approval voting, instant runoff voting, score voting. These are easy things to fix the flaws of the system to rid of the wasted vote syndrome. Um, of course, proportional representation is a great thing we should have, almost 100 countries have. Uh, electoral college, gerrymandering, why do we have ballot access just to get on the ballot as an independent candidate takes over 900,000 signatures, which means you have to gather 1.6 million, which costs upwards of seven, eight to $10 million just to get on the ballot as an independent, let's say for the 2020 races. So it is a rigged system and Free and Equal Elections is here to help fix that with the help of many others. Okay, so th that is much more important. Yesterday on the show, I talked about activism, and because you've got to get real change in the future. Now, but I got. I'm going to ask this question. Uh, and each year, we ask the same questions. Each each election cycle, same questions, the same concerns, and we end up on ground zero. Yeah. Well, we're going to fix that. Ed. Don't worry. Wolf Pack.com. Wolf Pack's going to get us an amendment to get money out of politics. But and of course, there's all these other wonderful ideas, and I want to ask you about those too. But I'm I'm too curious, so I'm gonna ask you whether it, it's sensible or not. Okay, so if you 
if God <laughs> comes down, okay, I, I'm an atheist, so I don't really believe in God, but we're creating a hypothetical situation, right? And says, okay, the election is going to be decided in Colorado, and there's a voter in Colorado uh, who is going to decide the election. It's one guy, okay? And he likes Jill Stein better, uh, but he's like all of us, he's worried about Trump. He thinks Hillary's corrupt, but Stein is better, but Trump is really, really bad. This the where we are as a country, right? That's generally what a lot of progressives think. How would you counsel Bob to vote? I would say compromising is what has gotten us here where we are today. And for me, I would go with my conscience. I, I don't live any other way. Uh, I, I vote with my conscience. Means. What is your conscience? My conscience would be whoever God consciously felt he should vote for, he should vote for. And whoever's out there, whoever you feel you should vote for, if it's Gary Johnson, if it's Jill Stein, uh, if it's Daryl Castle of the Constitution Party, and probably I think dozens of other people running for president, vote for them. The system is rigged in the sense that if you look and see who, who owns the voting machines, for example, uh, Diebolt sold to Dominion based in Denver, Colorado, it's a few powerful families. I mean, it's not good. So until and when we learn of, of how we can go about uh, fixing the rigged system, that is what we'll be focusing on uh, with our upcoming United We Stand Fest and the People's Presidential Debate at University of Colorado October 25th, co-hosted by Student Voices Count. Yeah, and so I just want to note here, that I think it's wonderful to have uh, diverse opinions, and and it's it's okay for us to disagree on some things. We all agree on fighting for real change uh, in the long term through activism, through changing the system. We might not agree day to day, so I, I think I get a sense from Ed, I, I, and, but I don't have to speak for him. I'll say, me voting my conscience would be to vote against Trump and make sure he doesn't win. But everybody's got a different that's, definition of conscience, right? Right. And so that's okay. God mm -hmm. bless. Right. And now you have all the opinions out there. So let's talk about the long-term fixes. So, what do you think of the the voting system we have here in California, where the top two vote getters uh, go to the general election? So, for example, in the Senate race here in California, we don't have a Democrat versus a Republican. We have two Democrats against each other. That way, I mean, some certainly would argue uh, that you get to vote your conscience more because you've got a more liberal Democrat and a more conservative Democrat. Top two is very corrupt. It's like Louisiana style politics. I would help lead the efforts to try to defeat that in 2010, Prop 14 in California. What it does is it sterilizes political cleansing. Um, proponents uh, said it was an open primary. In fact, it's a closed primary. I don't think it's worked in our favor at all. Fortunately, Arizona in 2012. A voted two against two to one against uh, passing a uh, top two. So I don't think it's very good. I think why? That what, what's wrong with it? I mean, I, I I tend to support it. Again, totally fine to have different opinions on this. Obviously, among a array of progressives, as we all fight for getting to the right solution at the end, which is to somehow get all of our voices to count. That's what we. That's the goal we all agree on. So wh why do you think uh, it? it you said it's cleansing or something? Well, what, what's wrong with it? I, I don't quite Well, know. like Louisiana style politics, which it really is like, there's only been one incumbent knocked out of office under the top two primary in over 30 years, and that was an extreme situation. So uh, Washington State had top two. that's typical of any state. Washington State, it, it just, if you didn't think it could get worse, top two makes it worse. Watching Washington State passed top two years before California. There used to be dozens, if not more, people who ran for office. It sterilizes, again, the political cleansing. So I like to focus more on the solution. If you want more details on it, you can go to Stop Top Two, T O P T W O dot org, and it has a whole detailed analysis. I actually interviewed with Judge Napolitano back in the day on Fox Freedom Watch about mm -hmm. that. So uh, the third party candidates, it's more challenging for them to be on the ballot initially when they introduced it in 2010. If they didn't maintain X amount of members, I think 100,000 it was, they were no longer ballot qualified. Of course, if they don't get on the ballot in the primary under top two, it could only be two Democrats, two Republicans, then they're more prone to get less voters, right? People registering with their vote. Plus you have to get 2% in the general election in order to main, maintain ballot access status, which made it made it more challenging when they passed that for the Just third Just last parties. quick question on that. Mm -hmm. What is the system you prefer? Proportional representation. Thank mm -hmm. you. I like to really shift towards the solutions. There's so many problems. Great to have the conversation. That's what brings about the solutions. The way we're going to bring about proportional representation, the way we're going to get money out of politics and so on, 
is bringing about accountability within our elections and replacing Democrats and Republicans alike, starting with the local elections. That's why I commend Mr. Ed Asner for being up Hello. in Cambria, inspiring people to run, and they have for local elections, eight people running in Cambria, this little town by Hearst Castle, south of Big Sur, where I live and Free and Equal Elections is headquartered. Uh, there's three incumbents up for re-election. There are five more people running and, a, and one incumbent as well, all accountable, six of them. And so until and when we start from the bottom up, that's when true change comes about. Local, the congressional races are key with congressional ratings at an all-time low. And independents, people are seeing themselves as independents more than ever. And parties, no mention of parties in the Constitution, I think they're a thing of the past as well. And Ed, do you sense that there are more people running at the local level? Has the Bernie Sanders revolution helped? Uh, or is there a little bit more of an uprising than you've seen in the past? I can't tell what, what the, the general lay of the land is, but uh, I, I certainly, anything that encourages uh, activism and, and interest and learning at the local level is bound to help at the upper level. And I, what I saw in Cambria was some of that. Uh, the one thing I, I, I didn't tell Christina this, but uh, I also saw that it was totally lacking in black and brown. Mm -hmm. And until that can happen, because that's what we are a nation of now, uh, and until we do that and get down to the masses below us, including the poor whites, and influence them, and in, in educate them so that we all can, can have some idea of what we're voting for or against, then uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's admirable, but needs work. Yeah, and, but we're on that work, we're doing that work, we're on that path. So I, I, I've got you here, I gotta ask you a little bit about um, you know, your activism in the past, because it could inform people's activism today. So for example, one guy who's an activist today is Colin Kaepernick that everybody's talking about. He's sitting uh, during the, you know, the Star Spangled Banner uh, and made conservatives really angry. I, uh, yeah, but he's still there. He's still kneeling. And others are kneeling with him. And it doesn't seem to go away. So were there more consequences back in the day for you when you spoke My show up? got canceled. For <laughs> you. Yeah, there were consequences. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was the Lou Grant show. And, yeah. and do you know that that's. And that was done by the, probably the most liberal tendency of, of network in the business at the time, CBS. Uh, but they had also worked against Murrow, they had also worked against the Smothers Brothers. So. Why do you think they did that? Money, money, it's always money, <laughs> money, 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 money. So they, they say, uh, the right wing has been saying for 40, year now, 40 years now, liberal media, liberal media. But the liberal, so-called liberal media is the one that canceled your show because you were too liberal. Yeah, it's also <laughs> controlled by money. And, and uh, I mean, I, I gave the definitive solution while I was being blacklisted. I gave an interview in Washington and, and, uh, and I said that, that uh, when, when somebody doesn't get a job like me or a show gets canceled, it's not because the liberals who cancel it want to blacklist him for his controversial political opinions. It's because, let us say me, he's too old, he's too gray, he's too fat, he's too, uh, he's whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's never because of his political opinions. So they cancel it and never letting their conscience be affected by the political aspect of the cancellation. So uh, uh, I was blacklisted for a while. and Finally, I got a job as a narrator in uh, Massachusetts. The first day on the job, the producer takes me out to lunch. He says, you know why you're here? I said, oh, that, that interview you gave in Washington about a year ago to a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, that's why you're here. Uh, what do you mean? He says, well, I put you down for a narration at that time. And I submitted the list to the company, and the company sent the list back with a red line through your name. I said, and I, he said, I didn't question it, but I knew why. But I didn't, I didn't oppose it. 
And that's why you're here today, to make up for that omission that I made, influenced by your interview in Washington, where the liberals participate in a blacklist, but uh, solve, salve their consciences by creating other reasons that they don't uh, even think about. What do you think is the root cause of that? S who is the one saying, we can't have Ed anymore? Because is it, I know the corporation, in the, in the original case, CBS is doing it, but are they doing it because of the sponsors? It of course, of course. Because, yeah, the answer being the producer, the director, they, they, they don't want to immediately alienate a certain percentage of the, the audience or uh, of whoever. And they know that if I get too controversial, I will alienate those people. So I got to keep squeaky clean. And that is how the system maintains the status quo. That's right. So if you try to rock the boat one way or another, they're not going to let you rock the boat. Not as we're an actor. Yeah, because we're making billions of dollars with this yeah, boat. Yeah. So just for God's sake, don't rock it. Yeah. And so that's how the invisible hand of the establishment maintains the status quo. Exactly. And so, and Ed has lived that. So, and then the funny thing is, they say about Kaepernick, like, oh, he's just trying to get attention. He could have gotten fired. He's just a backup quarterback. He would have lost about fourteen million dollars uh, really? in that case. You lost a lot of money uh, for your political activism. And the people I put out of work. There are 200 people at least on my show. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. That's tough. That's a lot. That's a high price to pay for your beliefs. Yeah. But that's what makes you an American. So I want to end on that thought. Did anybody ever come back and say, you know, Ed, we, we did this and this, but it turns out you were right. The system is corrupt, and, and thank you for fighting for it. You are. Yeah, they, they came in, but they were in positions of power, so it didn't make any difference. So p people could come back around and say you were right, but too little too late. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we're all going to fight together, though, to make sure it's not too little or too late. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I'm an eternal optimist, and I back that up with facts. Uh, and, I, and the fact is right now, there, I think there is a tidal wave, a tsunami of, of people who want that change. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we'll see how industrious they are. Well, that's on you guys. You mm -hmm. got to be industrious so that we could all do it together. So finally, Christina, one more time, tell folks where they can uh, check out the debates in Colorado. Sure. Uh, the 18 to 28 year olds are the game changers. The youth are going to come out. Um, students are free. They get priority tickets. Uh, it's going to be at CU Boulder, University of Colorado Boulder. You can go to freeandequal.org, uh, freeandequal.org to see and get more information about our United We Stand Fest, which will precede the presidential debate, co-hosted by a really influential uh, student organization, Student Voices Count. You all rock. I love all of you so much. So uh, October 25th, check it out. It will be streamed on our website. And uh, really so thankful for you having me here today and, and Ed. And I'm looking forward to coming here many times in the future. All right. Thank you, guys. Christina <laughs> Tobin, Ed Asner, thank, thank you so much for joining us on the Outdoors. Well, your, your success is, mm -hmm. I would say, the best possible indication there's a change. Mm -hmm. Change is coming, and we're definitely part of it. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, they're part of it. Change Thank you, guys. Come.